In today's video I'm gonna show you how to make the camera follow the object but not only, we're also gonna be creating assets from scratch so this one is gonna be extremely valuable. With that being said we got a power supply and we're ready to get straight into Adobe After Effects. And what I'm gonna do first is show you the comp settings and then we're gonna try to create a Windows folder. So for this I'm gonna head over to the rounded rectangle tool and we're just gonna create such a shape. I'm gonna recenter and what I'm gonna do is duplicate that layer, I'm gonna call it front and then the other one is gonna be back. We can actually change the color for the other one so we know what we're doing just temporarily. So now I'm gonna go to front, I'm gonna uncheck constraint proportions and we're just gonna play around with Y value, put it a bit lower and then I'm gonna extend this one a bit. And what we need to do is pre-compose that layer, we can again call it back, hit enter and here we need to grab the pen tool. So for this I'm gonna create a mask around it and let's maybe go somewhere here, a little adjustment and we're just gonna create something like that. Kind of reminding of a folder already. So the next thing we need to do is smooth out the edges. So for this I'm just gonna create extra points over here and then what we're gonna do is just hold alt and grab one of the points, do it like that and just try to round that corner. Okay, seems to be good here. Then we're gonna do the same procedure over here and the last point over here. So we kind of want to have the same roundness as here. So I'm going to click again and we're just going to proceed to creating a mask. Okay, honestly, I think something like that should do. And now what we're going to do is head over to the front. We're going to change the fill color to a linear gradient. I'm going to go into the colors and we're just going to use something kind of yellowy. Okay, then we're going to head over to the second point, also go to yellow and now it should be a bit darker. Let's hit OK. And now if you double click the outline of the shape, we're just going to see these two points. So what I'm going to do is drag this downwards and then the other one upwards. So that way we're going to be able to fade out these colors. And then we can actually head over to the back and we're going to do the same thing here. So we already got these colors, but this time we're going to have that brightest part a little bit lower and then the darkest one a bit higher. I think we could make one adjustment. I'm going to go back to back. <laughs> And then we're gonna click here, go to our colors, and we're just gonna change it for a brighter yellow. Okay, a bit better. Now, as for the front, I'm gonna add drop shadow effect. We're gonna change the opacity to 100%, distance to 0, and softness to 150. So this is pretty much perfect, and now I want to create a paper, which is gonna be kind of sliding out of that folder. So for this, I'm gonna grab the rounded rectangle tool, and we're just gonna create, let's say, something like like that and now we can head over here to the color and we're gonna change it to white so the second point is gonna be kind of like a grayish or maybe darker version of white so i'm gonna hit ok now i'm gonna double click the shape again and we're just gonna adjust it so brighter part is on the upper side and then the darker part is on the bottom so next thing we need to do is actually call it paper i'm gonna pre-compose that layer call it paper again we're gonna go into it and here we need to type in the text i'm gonna add the text that is editing shift we're gonna change the color to black Hit OK, then we're gonna change it to black and I'm gonna turn on capital letters. Now let's drop it somewhere here. We could bump up the font size and then I'm gonna duplicate that text, drop it on the bottom, change it to top secret. We kind of want to be mysterious here and we're gonna change the color to red. Then I'm gonna grab a different font, which is Ephesus and I'm gonna turn off the caps. So let's say it's gonna be here. Then we're gonna go back and we want to put the paper below front. So right now it's gonna be nicely sliding out of the folder. So the first thing I would do is turn off the visibility for the paper. We're gonna go to back one more time. And one thing I want to do here is uncheck constraint proportions and we're just gonna decrease the Y value. Now, if we go back, the mask is gonna be kind of messed up but if we hit M and double click the mask and we just slide it lower so it's perfectly aligned like before, so like that, then we're gonna be able to hide it. So we can create a keyframe for position. I'm gonna do it like that. And then we're gonna move forward and we're gonna slide it out. Now I'm gonna select both easy ease, go to the grab editor and we're just gonna create a peak on the left. Maybe let's do it faster. And then we want also that paper to slide out. So for this, we're just gonna hit W, rotate it a little bit. And then I'm gonna create a keyframe for position, move it probably somewhere here, go back Back and do it like that. So now I'm gonna select both easy ease, go to the graph editor and again create a peak on the left. So this is pretty cool. We can offset it a bit and now we kind of want to slide them back and we're gonna create a sharp movement going towards the back. So for this we need to right click, go to new, null object, drop it above the back, rename it to back control, then we're gonna parent the back to back control, then we're gonna create one more null object and call it paper control. I'm gonna drop it above the paper and we're gonna parent the paper to paper. The reason why I'm using null objects is because I want to remain the movement. So that way we're gonna be able to overlap the keyframes. So for this, I'm gonna create keyframes for position in both null objects, then move forward 
and separately we're gonna adjust it so this one is gonna go back like that and then the other one is also gonna be hidden so now we're gonna easy the keyframes go to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a mid graph just because of that we're able to remain the movement so there's basically no stop in this animation so if i hit you for these two you're gonna notice that the keyframes are overlapped so now we need to grab the mouse pointer and you can find it easily on the internet i'm gonna trim it to one frame double click and head over to the roto brush tool and select the entire shape Okay, I'm gonna hit freeze, go back, and we could actually decrease the shift edge. Now I'm gonna pre-compose, call it pointer, and I'm gonna right click again, go to time, freeze frame. So now, just to make some order, I'm gonna select all these bottom layers, I'm gonna pre-compose them, call it folder, it's gonna be cleaner on the timeline. So now I feel like we're ready to create a new camera, so we're just gonna head over here, we're gonna change it to two node camera, and what I'm gonna do is pick a preset of 35 millimeters. Let's hit OK. OK again. Then we're gonna create a new null object, parent the camera to the null, and we're gonna rename it real quick. Also change colors, and we're gonna turn everything into 3D. So now when the paper is going back, I want to have a sharp movement with the camera. So this is literally somewhere at this position. But first we need to create a movement for the pointer. So I'm gonna create a keyframe for position, adjust it a bit, probably scale it down, and we're gonna perform a click. So I'm gonna keyframe scale, decrease the value over here, then go back and just copy and paste. It should be opposite, so when we're clicking, it should be sliding out, but I think it's gonna work as well. So right now we're gonna take care of the position, so we're just gonna do it like that. Then we're gonna easy ease the keyframes. Okay, pretty cool, but I would probably apply the mid graph. So we're just gonna go here and again, create a peak in the middle. And now what I want to do is create another null object and this is gonna be our pointer control. So we're gonna parent pointer to the pointer control and turn on the 3D. And now I'm gonna go to cam control, hit P, create a keyframe for position and we're just gonna go backwards like that. Then maybe a bit to the left, maybe we can create keyframes for rotation. So I'm gonna keyframe all the values, drag them to the first keyframe and we're just gonna slightly rotate it. Okay, maybe go lower. So that's how it's looking. So let me adjust the timing and also we're gonna easy ease the keyframes, go to the graph editor, we're gonna select all the keyframes on the right, squeeze them in and do the same for the opposite side. Okay, we also need to adjust the timing so we're gonna select them all, do it like that. And now the most important part of the episode is to make the pointer follow the camera. So for this, we need to go to our pointer controller, hit P and also hold shift click R, keyframe position and values for rotation. And now we're gonna try to go to this position. We can actually try to copy the keyframes, go here and paste them. Also, I'm gonna select all these keyframes and I'm gonna easy ease them one more time, go to the graph editor, we're just gonna smooth out the movement. Okay, it's literally perfect right now. Also, whenever we're clicking, it'll be good to actually apply scale to the folder. So I'm gonna hit Alt Shift S. I'm gonna go to our pointer, hit U, and we could, you know, and we could actually recreate what we created there. So we're just gonna decrease the value and match the time indicator with that keyframe and go back to 100. Okay, it's a bit too intense. So what we're gonna do is change it to like 96. Let's just see how it would look with the motion blur on. A bit better. Now I'm gonna grab my logo, turn it into 3D, and now we're just gonna hit, I believe, Control Alt Home. I have a different shortcut for this, and then it should pop up in front of your screen. So I'm gonna hit P, first drop it below the pointer, and we're just gonna move it a bit away till the pointer is in front of the logo. So now we can adjust the values over here, like that. I'm gonna scale it down, and we can probably slide it in from the left. So we're just gonna do it like that, probably apply a graph, so we're just gonna squeeze the peak to the left. Pretty cool, but the timing is off, so we can adjust it one more time, and now it should be all good. I'm gonna turn on the motion blur, and also we're gonna head over to the camera, transform, alt kick point of interest, type in wiggle, and in brackets, let's say 1.5, 20. Okay, that's pretty awesome so far. And we're gonna do the same with our logo. So I'm gonna copy these keyframes, paste them here, and it's actually matching the whole scene. I would probably just hit you, select them all and easy ease. Maybe we could also offset the logo just by one frame. Pretty good. So this is a great way to actually make the object follow the camera. So you basically need to have the keyframes in cam control and match these keyframes and also the graph with the object that you want to have attached to the camera. And then whenever you're clicking the logo or do whatever else, you can just transition to another scene. Then something we could do is probably pre-compose that logo, call it logo. And then we're gonna click that asterisk, cut it at the point whenever we're clicking. And we're just gonna add deep glow to this, decrease the exposure and bump up the radius to just make that click more powerful. 
but we need to adjust the timing. Okay, it's actually matching the scene. And one more thing we could do is just create a keyframe for positioning pointer control and move that away. Easy is the keyframes and probably make it extremely slow. Probably a bit too slow. So we're just gonna head over to the graph editor and we're gonna create our favorite mid graph. Then let's spice it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to cam control, hit control D. We're gonna delete the last keyframes, part end one to two. And we're just gonna get closer to the logo like that. Maybe play around with Z and just apply the mid graph one more time. Okay, little adjustment. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Whenever we're clicking, there's more impact. Let's just adjust it a bit. And out also fade out the pointer. So we're just gonna use opacity keyframes. And also it's important to go to the folder and here we need to turn on the motion blur for everything. There's not a whole lot of movement, but it's still important to have the motion blur there. It's just gonna make everything smoother. So that'll be the whole scene. I really like whenever the paper is sliding out of the folder. It's looking absolutely perfect. So that'll be it for this episode. Hopefully you found it insightful. And without further ado, I'm gonna wrap it up here and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers guys.